Good evening, everyone. Pastor Brett here. Okay, and uh, uh, I have a Q&A here, a little question from a brother. Uh, Ryan Grandin um, asked me my opinion, my view uh, on eschatology. Um, Ryan, I'll try to keep this short. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> and uh, tell you this, that um, um, I'm not... Um, big on eschatology because as a pastor or counselor I um, my main focus is on what is happening with you in your life today um, how are you today and how are you um, working through the scriptures to um, overcome specific obstacles and whatever else you're going through uh, so, um, and, and so that's my main focus. When I read the scriptures, I read it from a counseling perspective. Um, but I also do, as a pastor, I've pastored a church years ago, a little country church. Um, and uh, I, uh, I, I, I can honestly tell you that, um, you know, I do have an eschatological position. Um, and there are certain things that... Uh, I understand, and I'm thankful for that. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. When when most people think about um, eschatology, um, they usually think about uh, such things as uh, the tribulation, you know, um, the tribulation period, uh, the three and a half years and three and a half years, you know. Why was it broken up into three and a half years and three and a half years? Um, you know, uh, are you pre-trib? Are you mid-trib or are you post-trib? Rapture, you know, the rapture. And, uh, you know, uh, um, I have a brother that uh, is fascinated with the rapture and always wants to talk about the rapture. He's a pre-tribber, boy, strong pre-tribber. Uh, I believe in a mid-tribulation rapture. Um, I don't believe that there's any any um, support for post-tribulation rapture. And for most pre-tribulation rapture um, people, um, they want to believe that Jesus is going to take us out before anything happens. The reason why the rapture is broken up into two, three and a half year periods is because uh, there is going to be a point where there is the great tribulation. And the great tribulation is that latter half, that three and a half year period, when all hell is going to break loose and Satan is going to set himself up on the throne claiming to be God. Uh, I think it was Paul in uh, Thessalonians and Peter also talked about it. You know, the the um, the um, Jesus talked about it as well in Matthew 24, which by the way is the greatest um, eschatological discourse you'll ever encounter. Read Matthew 24. Um, but, uh, you know, the devil is going to set himself up on the throne, claiming to be God. And uh, um, that's when people are going to worship the beast and bow down before him and get the mark of the beast in their hand or their forehead. And, uh, well, you know, the Bible teaches us, excuse me, the Bible teaches us that, uh, that we're going to um, uh, have uh, a little chip in the in the hand, and the, well, the Bible doesn't teach you any of that. You know, uh, it's it it it's believed that because of the modern technological advances that we are have today, and because of you know the little chip that you you see in your um, in your uh, on your bank card, you know, and you slide it in. Well, they're going to put a little chip like that in your hand or in your forehead. Well, you know, there's a very real possibility, and and that's okay. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, um, because of, uh, uh, that point where that mid tribulation point, the tribulation period, by the way, is a seven year period. Okay. And so there has to be a reason why it's broken up into two, um, halves. And it's because the first half is going to be a place when we're going to see all these things that Jesus talked about happening. And he says, I tell you all these things before and so that you, you'll know when you see these things come to pass. Know that the end is near, but not yet. 
For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there'll be wars and famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places or various places. You know, so I mean, you know, Jesus clearly warned us that we're going to see all of these things. Um, well, you say, well, uh, there are uh, already earthquakes and wars and everything else. So what is that? You know, what does that teach you? Well, when you read in the Greek, you notice that it's in an, in an escalated fashion. Okay, Jesus was talking about these things are going to happen in an escalated fashion. I'll give you an example. Um, I saw a chart once on a, on a blackboard. Uh, as a teacher in in uh, seminary in in Bible college where I went to Bible college, he had a big um, uh, poster on the blackboard, and it showed us. Um, in the 19, early 1900s, the, all the seismic activity in the world, they were measured by, the epicenters were measured by red dots, and fault lines were measured by red lines. And they showed the map of the world, of course, the laid out flat version. And you saw that, and you saw very few, I mean, if hardly any, red dots, and red lines. And then the, the map right next to it showed the current world and all of the seismic activity. It was cluttered with red dots and red lines. I was like, whoa, that's nuts. So, I mean, it's simple. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's evident and, and can be seen. Um, you know, there's a purpose for the two uh, um, three and a half year periods. Um, of course, uh, uh, there's so much more we can look at. As a matter of fact, I will do a video on um, my eschatological position uh, in regards to the tribulation. Uh, a lot of other people who think about the book of Revelation and want to study Revelation and, and uh, a lot of people want to uh, understand Revelation. Revelation is the hardest book uh, in the Bible to understand and interpret because Revelation was written in code. Revelation, when the book of Revelation was written, it was written in code and was written so that those believers at that time could understand it. And it would not be disseminated by the Roman government, by the persecuting powers that were at that time. Um, so that it, it would not be destroyed either because they couldn't, they didn't recognize it as a Christian writing. They didn't recognize it as uh, anything that was, you know, um, Christian, remotely Christian. Uh, so, I mean, there was a purpose for that, and I, I, I'm thankful for that. But it can be understood, um, because the Word of God is very clear. When you read Deuteronomy 29, 29, the Bible says that uh, um, these things are written for us and our posterity forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So, you know, we can understand the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever, that we might do all the words of this law. So, I mean, you know, it's from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, okay? And this is the entire Bible is revealed. So what's revealed is for us to understand. I'm thankful for the Word of God and for the ability to comprehend it. The best way to do so is to interpret it from a, um, uh, an exegetical position. Uh, that's my opinion, um, and that's something that I would encourage you to do. Not the only way to interpret the Scripture, but the best way to interpret it is to read the Greek. If you can't read New Testament Greek, understand, get a, um, an interlinear Bible. Get an interlinear Bible. Uh, I would specifically encourage you to get J.P. Green. 
uh, his interlinear Bible. It gives you it's 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 um, it's TR. It's 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 traditional text, Byzantine text form, and it is um, trustworthy um, translation. And what it is is what J.P. Green does is he takes he translates the Bible. He transliterates it literally in the center column of the of the of the text. You have the Greek, then you have underneath it the literal word for word English translation. And so when you read it, you see it, well, it's like little backwards here and there and um, not quite fluid. And so this is the problems that translators have when translating any language. It's never, it's, it's impossible to translate any language literally word for word perfect it just can't be done so um but what you do is, is you read it then you see what each word means then in one column jp green has the king james version and in the other column other side column he has the literal kind of like a it's in a modern typeface a modern uh, language translation, um, and it, and it's not a it's not like an NIV or uh, not even close to an NIV or uh, or uh, you know any particular modern English translation, but it's just um, a literal word for word rendition that's clear and that is fluid. So that J P Green. Uh, um, uh, interlinear Bible is uh, an excellent interlinear Bible that will help you um, understand the book of Revelation and really any book of the Bible that you read. Um, so, one last point. Um, I'm going to keep this under 15 minutes. One last point about eschatology, Ryan, is um, when you want to, if you want to understand the book of Revelation, then you have to read three books and I encourage you my wife and I did this uh, study um, not too long ago you should read the book of Ezekiel then the book of Daniel and then the book of Revelation you read those three books Ezekiel Daniel and Revelation when you read through those three books you'll have a, a better um, and and more um, complete view of what Jesus was saying to John in the book of Revelation. Um, the best way to understand the book of Revelation is to read through the whole Bible. You go through the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation and then you have a complete view. And I guarantee you by the time you get to the book of Revelation you'll have a better and more a complete understanding of the book of Revelation. So uh, that's my piece on eschatology. I hope it was a help to you. I um, hope it answered some questions for you. Um, we will do a, a video on the tribulation um, and why I believe in a mid-tribulation rapture. So I um, hope that's an encouragement. Jesus loves you. I love you. Um, I hope you all have a great evening, and thanks for watching. Thanks for everybody supporting. Thank you for your encouraging words. And I want to thank the Lord for those of you that would do this for a Bible review video. Really, <laughs> God bless you, man. I don't understand you guys, but um, that's awesome. That's cool. Uh, whatever. Do what you do. Um, have a great evening, and thanks again, everyone, in Jesus' name.